In this video, let's take a look at some of the signals that Bitcoin is putting in that no one is noticing, confirming more strength to the upside. We've also got an update for the S&P 500 as it closes out one of its strongest weeks in 2023. And as for the NASDAQ, it's closed out its strongest week in 2023 and all the way back to the cycle low. On top of that, the US dollar continues to fall. It's been rejected again from the 50% level. Amongst all other things, we have a lot to get through. So you know the deal, like and subscribe. And for the Aussies, quick shout out, link in the top of the video description for some limited tickets that we have for the Australian crypto convention happening next weekend. So if you wanna join us there, click that link, you'll get some more details about those particular tickets. You get this screen here, go through name and email, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So once you've hit that like and subscribe, let's dive into the end of week data that we now have for the US markets. Lots and lots of strength that the markets have given us. The interesting thing here is that we hit the 50% level in the first week here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five straight green days up. And these are very good green days as they are higher highs and higher lows. None of this stuff that happens in the middle with inside type of bars, but basically higher highs, higher lows. We've hit dead on the 50% level of the entire range to the downside, which essentially means half of those losses are now recovered and we're halfway to the top again. The market is, has now closed within the August bottom as well. So that's a pretty good sign that we are on the way to significant recovery. Now from yesterday's video, we talked about this because there was four straight days up with an extension of price, but we didn't have the time yet. We still don't have the time, but the price now easily exceeds these two price ranges to the upside. So it easily exceeds two of the rallies, but there were concerns about this being lower highs, lower lows. Very fair concerns. These are some of the tricks, I guess, or the rules, more importantly, a better way to put it, that GAN gave us over 100 years ago, looking at the markets and being able to decipher earlier on, there's always going to be some level of probability thrown in here, but we're trying to throw the prob probabilities further on our side to identify turns in the market. So this is just looking at the charts and identifying what the data is telling us, a specific chart data here, the price action, okay? And so yes, you do have lower highs, lower lows, but what we have seen out of this low is looking like, not confirmed, but this is basically a V. We have a V so far, potentially a V-shaped recovery just from this little move to the downside, but I don't know if we're gonna get the V-shape all the way back up to new all-time highs. I'm definitely not trying to forecast that whatsoever, but the, the signs of strength, the subtle signs of strength that we are seeing uh, the moves to the upside are greater than the previous moves. That's saying that the buyers are coming in. You can't deny that because essentially the, the, the facts are there on the chart. Higher moves to the upside. Closes above previous support levels, which then became resistance on the way down. Market broke down, resistance broke down, and then just burst straight back through those levels. The worrying thing here, short term, is the 50%, but the market did close dead on the 50% number. You look at the close there, 4,378.5, 50% 4 is 4,378.5. So dead on that level right now. Very, very strong week from the S&P after getting uh, annihilated for the last few months. And now we've basically got back all of the losses within one week. Think about that for a moment there. Now to the NASDAQ, before I come back to some of the S&P stats, the NASDAQ, just put in 916 points for the open to the close. An even greater move, if you take it from the low to the high for the week, uh, 925 points, a very strong week, basically taking back more than half of the losses on the way down over the last three months. Now that move to the upside, 7.7%, and the closest move there to the upside, so the rally was 76 so we've outstripped that now in a percent, but in terms of a, a price, an actual number, it's still slightly short, but it's roughly speaking, almost dead on what it's previously done. So if we start to see the NASDAQ also climb next week, that's again, more signs of strength that this was just another correction in the overall bull market to the upside. Now, I said in the intro that this particular bar here was the biggest week 
that the NASDAQ has had for 2023. It's actually the biggest week that it's had since the bottom. The first week of November, exactly one year ago, it had the exact same week. 965 points. It was actually 8.88% from the low. I love that number there. Any other Asians in the audience that love their triple eights, let us know in the comments section. But yeah, you can see that the market went up here, 965 points. And this week we did 916 points. So really huge bars coming off their October lows. And November has just again shown another big move to the upside. Is this the end? Is this the 100% confirmation? Never, never. We never have any of that sort of information because the market will tell us what it wants to do. We're just trying to read the signals the best way we can using the information from the charts. And of course, our analysis that we have learned. In this case, I follow a lot of GAN analysis. So we are nice on track, nicely on track here to put in that low, not confirmed yet, but put in that low and then continue on to the upside with, of course, some pullbacks along the way. That's just natural as we progress in the market. S&P looking good, NASDAQ looking good. They've got back half of those losses. So essentially all the way back to the prices of June and for the S&P 500, it's back to the prices also of June. The fear and greed, we covered this uh, just this week and the previous week, last week. Now you can see on the fear and greed index, the fear itself was lessening. So there was still fear in the market, but it wasn't anywhere near as uh, extreme as the 3rd of October. And when you look at the 3rd of October, that was this low here. The market ran down in price, but it ran up in market sentiment. Again, we looked at that at the time as we understood that from the low from Bitcoin. Remember in Bitcoin, we had the June low and we had the November low. Prices went down. Sentiment was increasing. It was going from extreme, extreme fear up to fear, but the price went down. Everyone was calling 10K, everyone was calling 14K or whatever number they were throwing out there, but the chart was telling us something different. We needed the confirmation, the nice big breakout here, which is what we want to look at with uh, in a moment with Bitcoin, looking at some of these massive signals that nobody's looking at when it comes to these breakouts and confirmations. But that's what we understood when it came to uh, the S&P 500 on a shorter term time frame. You can see here extreme fear, and then we got fear, rising sentiment, yet the price was going down. And then what do we see? Well, we see a nice big move to the upside. Sometimes it doesn't happen that cleanly and a massive push up, but in this case, that's what we got and we're gonna take it. Next thing was the VIX back into the bull market zone. I know a lot of people were screaming, well, the VIX is climbing, the volatility is climbing, the market's collapsing. Well, what do you know? We had another lower high here, another lower high. There's the market cycle low in October, 2022. We've had lower highs the whole time. Does that mean that we will always get lower highs? I don't think so. I think there's going to be a point where we'll get some sort of extreme move for the S&P. Maybe we climb up past 5,000 points, who the hell knows? And then we get a bit, bit of a move down. Maybe it's more like that. And those sort of smaller moves are going to put a little bit more of a dent in the VIX. But let's keep watching this particular downtrend and then assess what the market situation is if it was to break over that. But that's a long way off. It's just preparing for those possibilities in the future because, of course, you're definitely going to hear all the bears come back and tell you that the markets are going to collapse yet again and we're going into recession, yada, yada, yada. You get the point that they're always trying to do that. And now, well, they've missed out on the, on the bottom and the market's how many percent from the top to where we currently sit? 5.7% from the July top. So the VIX back into its healthy bull market zone underneath 17 here on the reading. NASDAQ looking pretty strong. The US dollar broke down from 105. So that was the key level that we've been watching and waiting to see if you would get that flip from support potentially into resistance. The week, this week, broke down and closed under that level. So still early days, but you can start to see how some of these signals, uh, they accumulate over time and they give you that further and further confidence that, well, it's probably likely we're going to see further downside here. And I think the 50% target is looking rather sweet at this point in time, 103, double top here, 50% fail, 50% fail at 107, 105 has been taken out. Let's just see if this can get back to 103 and what happens at 103. Do we get support, another rally and another attempt or we start to break down from that point? The other thing to note here from the US dollar and something that's been on our analysis for over 12 months now, 
uh, as the market was climbing up. And then of course, when this massive, massive peak came in in September of 2022, I've got tweets, YouTube videos, all that sort of stuff talking about this most likely being the top because of the extreme bullish news and how the news is always wrong at those peaks. You guys get it. You've seen it many, many times before. They did it again at the lows here. This was all about bricks. If you remember in April, uh, March and April, the market was just heading down, 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 got a low, a little bounce. This was the fake out. And then we had that 12 or 14 week rally. So the news was extremely bearish at the low. Everyone getting off the US dollar for all of their trading. Uh, Malaysia asking Ch uh, China to help them out with, to get off the US dollar. It was just everything. You had South Africa, you had Brazil, you had everything saying that they are finished with the US dollar and was over. And then what do you see? You see a massive run to the upside. They're always, always wrong. That's the media. That's what happens. They're just reporting on fundamentals, which basically are useless when it comes to actually trading the markets. Extreme bullish news. We got the peak. Extreme bearish news. We get the idea. Now we're starting to see this bit of a, a roll over here. Let's wait and see what happens from that point. But as you can probably see from the technicals, not looking as strong as it once did. That leads us over to BTC and some of those massive signals that I don't think anyone is watching. It's part of our Wyckoff analysis. And I'll direct you to phase D of Wyckoff. But in particular, just around the evidence of the patent advances, so signs of strength, which is SOS, on widening price spreads and increasing volume, as well as reactions. So again, we have the corrections on smaller spreads, diminished volumes, price uh, during phase D, the price will move at least to the top of the trading range, et cetera, et cetera. So the main thing we're looking at here are the price spreads and increasing volume. Massive one here for BTC, increasing volume that happened in October. You can see this was the highest volume since this one here, which was March. So we had a big push to the lows. That was the fear. Everyone trying to sell higher low, extremely important for your own analysis. You get extreme fear on a higher price low. That is telling you something. Now, I know I've been banging on about this for over six months now, probably what, seven or so months, seven or eight months since that March low. You can see it on Twitter and, and YouTube as well. That was very difficult for most of the time because of how much fear there was. But when you can see that price on the upside, it's like an absolute sitter, an absolute easy one to take because, well, price has gone up, but everyone else is fearful. Something isn't playing out as, as to what the media is trying to tell us. But you can see here, huge price volume, low, and then a breakout to the upside. We've got very big price action, uh, volume action here, and then a breakout to the upside. Now, if I switch this on, you can see a lot of the uh, occasions here in history, we had a breakout here on increased volume, relatively speaking to the previous volume of the time. So that's what I'm looking at here. We've got increased volume, relatively speaking to that time. This is a six, seven month period. It's a long period, a lot longer than most people can wait around in the markets. You also had a pretty big breakout here in January that took us back above all of the FTX jargon. Speaking of FTX, one year on, SBF has been uh, committed and he looks like he's spending the rest of his life in jail. I think they've got to wait until early next year to go through to the sentencing, but essentially they've found him guilty on all seven accounts one year on. Isn't that interesting? One exact year from when all this uh, pandemonium happened in the markets, which was roughly the 7th or 8th of November. So again, breakouts, high volume, relatively speaking to what happened in the past. And then cycle bottoms, high volume, relatively speaking to what happened in the past. Breakouts, high volume, relatively speaking to what's happened in the past or the recent history. You get the idea. Very, very significant volume. Very significant volume here on the cycle lows. And then you start to get each of the breakouts occurring. Does this mean it's over, that we're not going to see prices come back to these levels? Of course not. But what it shows from history, at least, is that it's very, very unlikely that you'll see these particular bottoms broken, the cycle lows and those initial breakouts from the cycle low to that initial breakout. Some might be asking, well, what about this one here? Why isn't there any volume? Well, I think Coinbase just started at that time. So they obviously have to get their volume to the exchange, but you can click onto many other charts that actually have some data here and you can see it was extreme volume at those lows as well. Okay, so that's basically what Wyckoff tells us here. Uh, 
volume has increased, price spreads are also increasing as well that we've seen. And then of course we have to expect some sort of um, reactions from that point as well, because that's essentially profit taking. So where does this leave us in our time counts and our price counts? Well, we're into that 12th month now of the move out of the cycle bottom. We have the halving coming up in roughly five months time. We have our 50% level sitting here at roughly 42,000. As always, I have to mention, I'm not a financial advisor, all that sort of stuff. There are no guarantees in the market. We are just looking at the data to identify possibilities or probabilities of where this market action could go. For my own benefit here, I'm, I'm targeting roughly $42,000 because of that 50% level, dead through $42,000. And we know from history, at least if you've been following the channel, got it in again, like and subscribe down below. We know that once the market hits this 50% level from the top to the bottom, that at least in history, according to the data, only facts, the market has never gone back to a new cycle low from that point. The other thing is once it gets to the lower uh, first monthly lower swing top using our GAN analysis, so our GAN swing indicator here, you can see that once it hits that 50%, it doesn't go back to a new cycle low either. So we've did that in yesterday's video. That's why I always suggest like and subscribe so you can follow along throughout the journey of the bull market cycle here and for the stock markets as of course, this is your home of macro cycle analysis, studying the past to forecast the future. This is how we do it. This is what we look at to give us clues to what might happen in the market moving forward. So that's the target, I think within five months to potentially come up to test this level here, break through it. Who knows? Let's just continue to follow the trend. And as we know it, the trend is up higher highs, higher lows using our GAN swing indicator here, specific rules to identify that, of course. And that just helps swing the probabilities in our favor as traders and investors if we're trying to learn anything about the market so that we can make better informed decisions. So one of the one of the other pieces I want to look at is the average true range, something else that we can identify uh, volatility with here in the markets. So Bitcoin on the weekly chart here from the peak, the previous cycle peak. Now, this is only one cycle that we're looking at, but the idea of the average true range tells us that uh, the market could be beginning to break out again. But I what I want to point out here is from the top to when the market started to break out again. So you can see the average true range flattens out, has a few little moves to the upside and then begins to flatten out before it moves again for that final run. We can see it's about a thousand 1,030 days. That's just from the the price peak. If we take it from roughly the peak of the average true range, it's a little bit further in. So it's about 970 days. So there's about a two month difference there. So if you uh, project these from the top here, so that's the top of the average true range, it takes us out to March of next year. So we've talked about March multiple times, especially at sort of April, May period, uh, because that's quarter two, quarter three of 2024. I think this is all sort of building up to something interesting at that particular time. That's from the, uh, the, the top of the average true range to when it starts to break out again and seal the deal and break through those highs. Right now, it looks like we're trying to attempt some highs. So I don't think this is the absolute run to new all-time highs. I think there's still the possibility that we come up and test and then start to fade out again into that time period of next year, which will then present something like this on the average true range chart. You've got a few little pump ups, but of course at the time they feel pretty extreme. Like that's, that's a lot of volatility, 300% up, 50 odd percent down. Uh, I don't remember that was 40, 60% up and then another sort of 60% down. There's still a lot of volatility within that period. And I think that's what the market is, um, is basically putting on now. So if we do get a quick run up to the upside, if it's quick, it's going to be an abnormal move compared to what we've seen since June of 2022. So if you do your maths, it's sort of like 17 months or so. So that would probably be met with a bit of a fade out until the halving. And then you start to see some more wind up, some more grind, and then the, the move again into that second half of 2024. So there were two timeframes there that we're watching, middle of the year, quarter two, quarter three, of course, for some testing of these levels, like I pointed out in this particular chart here. But if this does happen quite quick, then 
we have to expect the market's probably going to grind after that point. All the excitement from what just happened now and potentially the excitement of the halving, potentially the excitement of ETFs that might or might not be uh, approved in January, all that sort of stuff, the news headlines, that might all come through now early on and then you'll get that fade out, which is, I guess, potentially how things happen. We obviously don't know. We just got to throw a few ideas out there so that we can be prepared for anything that comes up in the future. But essentially the charts are telling us something before any of that, that news comes about anyway. So this major signal here is something to pay particular attention to, especially as we continue to break out, which is exactly what the market's doing. And we'll pay attention to it around these highs because as this happens, it's very hard to believe that the market is coming to an end. We have our timing to tell us that, we have the price, we have uh, the, uh, the pattern to tell us that, and of course, the volume as well. But there was no way we could believe it in January of 2021 that this was coming to the end of a move. Let's see what happens in this next cycle. But I think these rules that have stood the test of time over 100 plus years that this has been working, of course, Wyckoff's from the early 1900s, that's why I say over 100 years, I think it will prevail once again. Stay up to date with that. Follow us on Twitter as you know, you guys are having pretty good questions about these particular signals and I'm just answering them over there so you can get an idea of what these, uh, what these signals are all about. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next video. And for you guys, you Aussies that are in Melbourne or can get to Melbourne, use the link in the top of the video description. That's the Australian Crypto Convention and we should see you there on either Saturday or Sunday of next week. All right, guys, until next week, there's my peace out. Have a great weekend and I'll see you then. Cheers.